What do you do in QuickBooks Online when a customer's check has bounced? Let's say that your customer paid you for an invoice, you went and deposited the check, and a few days later, the check bounces, the funds come out of your bank account, and you're charged a fee. When that happens, we need to record that the money is coming out of our bank account, and we need to indicate that the invoice is still open because the customer hasn't really paid it. They still owe us for that invoice. In this video, I'm gonna walk through the steps of doing that. Let's go over to QuickBooks Online. What I've done here is I've already created an invoice for a customer. So if we go to the chart of accounts, we see accounts receivable currently has a balance of 1206.34. I created a thousand dollar invoice for a customer. Let's go ahead and receive payment for that invoice. So let's say that customer paid us by check for this invoice. It was check number 1045. We choose our invoice, confirm $1,000. We've got the check number. It's going to undeposited funds because it's a physical check that came in the mail. We haven't deposited it to the bank yet. That's the next step. And we've selected the invoice that it applies to. So I'll go ahead and save and close. Now what we see is accounts receivable is $1,000 less because that customer no longer owes us that $1,000. Undeposited funds is $1,000 higher than it was before. It was $2,300 before. Now what I want to do is go ahead and record that as being deposited. We're depositing it to our checking account. I'm going to say that the deposit date was on Monday the 6th and then we select that payment. So $1,000 confirms the checking account and the date, and we save and close. Now let's say a couple days later, this payment bounces. It is no longer in our checking account. The bank has withdrawn the money and they've charged us a fee. We need to reflect that the customer still owes us for that invoice because that payment wasn't any good. What we need to do is record an expense to show the $1,000 coming out of the account. So what I'll do is go to new transaction and choose expense. And the payee, we want to actually choose that customer. And for the category, we'll assign it to accounts receivable. And what this is going to do is actually increase that customer's accounts receivable by $1,000. Because we are saying $1,000 is going out of the bank account and the opposite side of that is that it's increasing accounts receivable. So checking account balance is going down $1,000 and accounts receivable is going up $1,000. As a description, I'm gonna put bounced check. Now we save and close. This gives us an expense that is posting to that customer's accounts receivable account. What we can now do is associate that expense with the invoice. So we need to go to that customer's record. And the way that it's currently set up, you see that we have $1,000 open and that's because of that $1,000 expense that we posted. So we have the $1,000 invoice and then the $1,000 payment that's currently posted to the invoice. And then we have this $1,000 expense. Now what we need to do is open up this payment and we need to unapply it from the invoice because that invoice is still open. They still owe us for that invoice. And instead, we will apply the $1,000 to that expense that we just created. Now what this does is effectively just closes the loop on that bad payment, that bad check. We're still recording that we received their $1,000 payment, but we had $1,000 go out of the bank account. And now what we have is this $1,000 invoice is open now. And that's why we see the status is overdue because the current date is past the due date that is set on the invoice. Now, if we were to go to our accounts receivable aging detail, we see this invoice 1011 for $1,000. That is the invoice that the customer owes us for. And if we go to 
the chart of accounts and our checking register activity, we're still showing that we deposited that thousand dollars and then we have the thousand dollars coming out. So we don't want to just delete the payment because we want to show the full paper trail. We want to show that we did deposit a thousand dollars and then a thousand dollars came out of the account. And then the final thing that we might want to do is record a bank fee for the bounce check because sometimes your bank will charge you a fee if a check that you've deposited bounces. And you can see that I already did this before when I was practicing for this video. So I'll delete that one that was posted. Ideally, you can probably just record this when it comes through your banking feed. But what I'm going to do is record it as an expense. So we'll again say that this was on the 6th. It's coming out of that checking account. The category is going to be bank charges and fees. And we'll say that it was a $15 fee. Go ahead and save and close. And now what we see on our chart of accounts is that invoice is still open. Undeposited funds is only 2300 because we had recorded that payment as being deposited. And in our bank account, we have the deposit of their bad check, the expense of that check bouncing, and the bank fee associated with it. Let's say you want to pass that $15 bank fee on to your customer. Why should you incur a $15 expense when it's their fault for writing a bad check. In order to invoice for it, we need to set up a product or service for bank charges like that. Because you'll recall that when we go to invoice someone, we can only invoice based on the products or services that we've created. We can't invoice directly to an account on our chart of accounts. What I'm going to do is go to sales and products and services and then I will create a new product or service and this can either be a non-inventory item or a service item. It doesn't make too much of a difference. I'm going to go ahead and set it up as a non-inventory item. I'm going to call it bounced check charge, or you could say bounce check fee. And then if we want to put it among a specific category within our products and services, we can do that. And then the income account, I'm actually going to put against bank charges. And what this is going to do is when we invoice for it, it will reduce that bank charges account. I'll show you the effect of that on our report after we invoice it. I'll save and close. And then we want to create a new invoice using that item that we just set up. So we'll go to our customer, we'll date it the same date as the bounce check, which I'm now realizing I dated the same as the deposit, but that's okay. And that charge was $15 and then we'll save and close. Now, if we go to the customer's record, what we see is they owe us $1,015. We have the invoice for $15 for the bounce check fee, and we have the $1,000 invoice, that original invoice. Now, let's go look at the P&L so that I can show you the effect of recording that bank charge expense and then the invoice. So I'll go to the P&L make sure that the dates include today and I'm going to even just set it as this month to be easier and we see bank charges and fees shows up on here but with a zero dollar balance and this is a quick little tip for you if a row is showing on the P&L with a zero dollar balance that means that it did have activity going through it that netted out to zero I'll click into that and what we see is our expense for $15 which created a $15 expense and increased this expense accounts balance $15 but then when we invoice the customer it goes down $15 and this is to reflect that we aren't really incurring that $15 expense if we're being reimbursed for it. So it's not something that we want to show on our P&L as an expense. 
That's it for this video. It was a quick one. Let me know in the comments if there are any of these tricky transactions that you're looking to figure out in QuickBooks Online. And if this video was helpful, please hit that thumbs up, like button. It'll help more people see it. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification to get notifications anytime that I post a video.